Today I'm going to be taking a look at the humble running shoe, which is one of the most important and also one of the most expensive pieces of equipment that many of you will buy for your running and therefore worth getting right. It may surprise you to learn that the running shoe is actually one of the most controversial and hotly debated topics in all of sports science, and that's because nobody really understands whether the shoes do what they claim to do, which is to prevent injury. And in fact, some people are alleging that the shoes are actually responsible for causing injury. People often use this statistic that between 60 and 70 percent of runners will be injured every single year. That was the same in 1980 as it was in 2010, which means that 30 years of technology in shoes has not made a dent in the prevalence of injury among runners. So the fact of the matter is that there is not a single university library anywhere in the world that contains the research that would allow us to conclude yes, the shoe prevents the injury, or no, the shoe is actually responsible for causing the injury. So it's a very complicated debate, and over the course of the next week, I will give you some links for those of you who want to read a little bit more about it. But what I'm going to do with this short clip is highlight one aspect of the debate, and that's the issue over pronation and overpronation. This is important because if you go down to the store to buy shoes, it's very likely that you'll hear this term thrown about, and it's important because it often dictates which shoe you are told to buy. And so I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what it means and hopefully clarify some of the controversies around the issue. So what exactly do pronation and overpronation mean? Very briefly, pronation is the movement of the foot from the outside where it tends to land over to the inside just before toe-off. Here is a slow motion video which will hopefully explain the concept a little bit more. I've exaggerated the movements to emphasize the point, but you'll be able to see exactly how the foot and the ankle move during the stance phase of running. So here you can see my right foot hitting the ground, and you'll notice that the point of impact is on the outside of the heel, and then the toe-off happens over the big toe towards the inside. And so my foot has rolled inwards, and it's this inward roll that is known as pronation. If we watch it in ultra-slow motion, you'll see again how the ankle seems to collapse towards the inside as that roll happens. You'll also be able to see the forces being applied from the ankle through the shin bone towards the knee. And the pronation is really important because it helps to disperse that force a little bit more effectively. It's also extremely normal. Most people show some degree of pronation, perhaps not as much as I've highlighted, but there is in almost all cases some pronation during running. Now I can't stress enough that that movement of the foot is actually normal and in fact really important because it helps to disperse the forces that are sent through the body and the joints during the landing phase. So when someone tells you that you pronate excessively, you must be very careful about what they're advising you to do. My personal belief, which is also shared by many in the industry now, including podiatrists, is that a lot of the motion control shoes, these are the shoes that often have a built-up inside in order to try to prevent that movement, are actually counterproductive. And if you do feel that you're struggling with excessive movement, then the best advice I can give you is that you rather get yourself a well-cushioned shoe and then see a podiatrist who can custom make orthotics that might help prevent that movement. If you are not one of those people who pronates excessively, then the advice is that you should look for a cushioned shoe that is neutral and extremely comfortable when you wear it. That's probably the most important criteria. So it's, it's ironic that all the science and all the research ultimately leads us to say, buy the shoe that's most comfortable for you. And that might seem like a sellout, but unfortunately we don't know any better than that. That's pretty much a wrap for episode two. Bottom line, comfort, cushioning, and stick with what works for you. Don't let anyone convince you to change your shoe if you feel that you're happy and injury free. Please join me next time when I'm gonna be looking a little bit more at running technique and again, coming back to how the foot hits the ground during running. In the meantime, if there are any questions at all, please make use of the discussion board at the top of our Facebook page or even just comment on this video. I'll pick them all up and I'll do the best I can to respond to you. Happy training and we'll chat again in a week.